Okay, Red Elaine here. Um, so I'm gonna do uh, a critique, I guess, of a con video. Um, I just kind of picked one at random, and I don't know how well this is gonna work. And we just met, but call me crazy. So let's see. I I, I kind of picked one at random. It's a little bit longer than I wanted to. I just looked at the time, 11:43. But you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. So uh, hopefully the audio turns out okay, and the squeaking chair doesn't bother you too much. And maybe I can keep that. You see okay? I can see. Okay. Let's just play it. Let's just do this. Age old question. And the question is, let's say I have a ledge here. I have a ledge or a cliff, or maybe this is a building of some kind. And let's say it has height H. So let's say it has a height of H right over here. And what I'm curious about is if I were to either let's say that this is me over here. So this is me. If I were to either jump myself do not that. recommended for yeah. very large ages, or if I were to throw something, maybe a rock, off of this ledge, how fast would that either myself or would that rock be? Okay, I'm sorry, I already had to stop. One, it's not really an interesting problem, um, and, or an age-old question. That's just not true. Two, he automatically goes in there saying, okay, well, if you throw a rock, I don't know how he's going to solve the problem, but I suspect he's going to say, drop the rock which is a completely different problem. Um, let's just go. I'm never gonna get through this thing, it's too long. When it gets right before it hits, right before it hits the ground. And like all of the other videos we're doing on projectile motion right now, we're going to ignore air resistance. And for small H's and for small velocities, that's actually reasonable. If, or if the object is very aerodynamic and has and, and is kind of dense, then the air resistance will matter less. If it's me kind of belly flopping from a high altitude, then the air resistance will start to matter a lot. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume we're going to assume no air, or we're not going to take into effect the the effects of air resistance. Or we can assume that we're doing this on on an okay, Earth-like well, planet that got has it. no atmosphere. I'm However impatient. you want to do it. So let's just think I, about I am impatient. Problem. It's my and own. Say, you know, fault. some of you might say, well, that, that, that's not realistic. But this actually would be realistic for a small age. If you were to jump off of a is he still uh, talking about air resistance? One story building air uh, resistance will not I really am just impatient. People get impatient with me too. I'm much sure. larger building, then all of a sudden it matters. And I don't recommend you do any of these things. Those are all very. Uh, he still doesn't much recommend better it. to do it with okay. So that's actually the example we're going to be considering. So let's just think about this a little bit. We want to figure out. We want to figure out. So. At the top of, right when the thing gets dropped, right when the rock gets dropped, you have an initial velocity. You have an initial velocity of zero. I did it! Again, Don't do that! Here. That's, That's a scalar. That's a vector. Scalar vector. Can it be equal? Cannot. No. Bad. A positive vector. Put zero vector. Negative vector means down. Negative so vector. You have an initial velocity over here that of zero. Okay. And then at the bottom, at the bottom. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hyper analyzing this, but. Okay, you cannot do that. That's bad. Negative vector is down. Bad. You can say the if it's moving down, it has a negative y component, but then it's a scalar. We don't say this a vector going down is negative. That's not true. I don't. That's okay. I'm never gonna make it through this. Some final velocity. We're going on two and a half minutes. Final, we're going to have some final velocity here. That is going to be a negative number. So it's going to have some negative Again, value. No. Here. So this is going to be Get negative. rid of the vector sign and put a y. This is going to be a negative number right over there. We oh. know that the acceleration of gravity for an object on, on free fall, <laughs> an object in free fall near the surface of the Earth, we know it, and we're going to assume that it's constant. So Say something about air again. Constant Do it. acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Vector So what scalar. we're going to do is given an h, and given that their initial velocity is zero, and then our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per squared, we want to figure out what our final velocity is going to be. He said meters right per squared, but that's okay. We hit the ground. We're going to assume that this, is, this h is given in meters right over here, and we'll get an answer in meters per second for that final velocity. So let's see how we can figure it out. So we know, we know some basic things. The whole point of these is to really show you that you can always derive these more interesting questions from very basic things that we know. So we know that displacement 
is equal to displacement is equal to average velocity average velocity times change in time times change in time and we know that average That's okay. velocity so average got velocity it, if we assume acceleration is constant which we are doing average velocity is the final velocity plus the initial velocity plus the initial velocity over 2 and then our change That's in okay. time our time our, our the, the amount of elapsed time that goes by this is our change in velocity so elapsed time is the same thing I'll write over here is our change in velocity divided by divided by our acceleration and just to make sure you Why? understand this it just comes straight from the idea that acceleration or let me write this way that That's change not in good. velocity how do you do velocity vector divided by vector times time or I should say acceleration times change times change in time so if you divide both sides of these this equation by acceleration you get this right over here so that is what our displacement remember I want an expression for displacement in terms of the things we so know so you should just at this point just say okay right boom we're well, going to just deal example, one dimension right and here, boom just use the y coordinate and right then you can do delta v y divided by a y you can do that we know that our initial do velocity this. is zero our initial velocity is zero so this first expression for the example we're doing the average velocity is going to be our final velocity our final velocity divided by two since our initial velocity is zero our change in velocity change in velocity is the same thing change in velocity is the same thing as final velocity minus initial velocity minus initial velocity and once again, we know that the initial velocity is zero here. So okay, this is just a little personal note. And you know, everyone has their own little quirks, and I do my own dumb things too, but um, he always says everything twice. He always says everything twice. It's sort of like in Top Gun when they're fighting. Fox 2, Fox 2, turning left, breaking left. You know, that's what he does. I don't know, it gets kind of annoying. But like I said, I know that I'm annoying. Change in velocity is the same thing as our final velocity. Once again, this will be times. Instead of writing change in velocity here, we can just write our final velocity because we're starting at zero. That should be velocity zero. You can't so say a zero vector, whatever. Our final velocity divided by our acceleration divided by our acceleration. Final velocity, same thing as change in velocity because initial velocity was zero. And all of this is going to be all of this is going to be our displacement. And now it looks like we have things in we have everything written in things we know. So if we multiply both sides of this expression, or both sides of this equation, by two, by two times our acceleration, by two times our acceleration on that side, and we multiply the left-hand side by you know, the same colors, two times our acceleration, two times our acceleration. See, you said it twice. On the Fox two, side, Fox two. We get two times our acceleration. Three times. Times, <laughs> times our I got it. displacement. It's two times our displacement is going to be equal to, on the right hand side, the two cancels out with the two, the acceleration cancels out with the acceleration, it will be equal to the velocity, our final velocity squared. How do you multiply two vectors? Is it stop product or cross product? Our final velocity squared. Final velocity times How do you square a vector? Velocity. And so we can just solve for final velocity here. So we know what our we know our acceleration is nine point is negative nine point eight per second squared. So let me write this over here. So this is negative 9.8. So we have 2 times negative 9.8. So I can just let me just multiply that out. So that's negative 19.6 meters per second squared times meters per second squared. And then our what's our displacement going to be? What's the displacement over the course of dropping this rock off of this ledge or off of this roof? So you might be tempted to say that our displacement is h, but remember, these are vector quantities, so you want to make sure you get the direction right. From where the rock started to where it ends... I don't think I'm going to make it through. I really don't. It's going to go, it's How much going to go a distance of h, but it's going to go a oh distance of h okay, I can downwards. Make it. I can make it. And our convention is down is negative. So in this example, our displacement, our displacement from when... I randomly just picked this one, too. I didn't to look the for ground. it. The displacement is going to be equal to negative h. You know, I don't it's plan that far ahead. Distance of h, but it's going to travel that distance downwards, and that's why this vector notion is very important here. Our convention is very important here. Vector. So our displacement scalar. over here is going to be is 
going to be negative h and negative h meters. Okay, I don't think he's doing the important right here, but meters. So this is this is the variable, and this is the short. Yeah, I wouldn't do that either. H would be lucky for ten us, meters. Out. The meters is inside the variable h. I wouldn't put h m. I mean, it's not technically h, wrong. I don't think, but h meters squared per second squared. Meters See, squared I, I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't. Is equal to our final velocity. And squared. notice. He made a big deal about vectors, but there's no vectors down here. It's like, poof! Oh, no, there it is. Okay. And notice, when you square something, you lose the sign information. If our final velocity was positive, you square it, you still get a positive value. If it was negative and you square it, you still get a positive value. But remember, in this example, we're going to be moving downwards, so we want a Okay, so he made a big deal about so the really sign, and then he says, oh, you don't even know the sign. Velocity, we take the, essentially the negative square root of both sides of this equation. Just what do does that mean if the so sign doesn't matter? What does that tell you? Sides of this. So you take the square to that side, you take the square to that side, you will get, and I'll flip them around, you'll get your the velocity. Oh, I guess the negative sign says he can take the square root of a positive number, but still. The square root of 19.6 h, and you, know, you can even take the square root of the meter squared per second squared, treat them, treat them almost like variables, even though they're units. And they outside are of the really radical like sign, variables. you get a meters, a meters per second. And the thing I want to be careful here is if we just take the principal root here, the principal root here is the positive square root, but we know that our velocity is going to be downwards here because that is our convention. So we want to have, we want to make sure we get the negative square root. So let's try it out with some numbers. We've, we've essentially solved what we set out to solve at the beginning of this video. How fast would we be falling as a function of the height? But let's try it out with some things. Let's say that the height is, I don't know, let's say the height is Let's say the height is five meters. Five meters, which would be probably jumping off of a or throwing a rock off of a one-story dropping a commercial a rock. one-story building. Dropping. And it's about that's about. Well, what would happen if you throw it? Feet. Then, so, then yeah, this. About, about the roof of a well, building. I don't even want to point to the stuff, but. So let's turn it on. And so, what do we get? If we put five meters in here, we get 19.6. 19.6 times five times 5 gives us 98, so almost 100, almost 100, and then we want to take the square root of that, so it's going to be almost 10, so the square root of 98, it gives us 9 point, roughly 9.9, .9, and we want the negative square root of that. So in that situation, when the height is 5 meters, so if you jump off of a one-story commercial building, you're going right at the bottom, or if you throw a rock on that, right at the bottom, right where it hits the drop. ground, it will have a velocity will have a velocity of negative 9.9 I would love to have seen him say something about why we're looking at right before it hits the ground. I mean, it's important. Per Instead of after it hits the ground. It's up to you as an exercise to figure out how fast this is in either kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Because it's pretty fast. It's like, you know, it's not something you would want to do. And this is just off of a one-story building. But you can really figure this out. You can use this for really any height as long as we're reasonably close to the surface of the earth. <coughs> this and is, is, an, is a good start, but that's not the way I would really approach height, it. Um, I think he made a little shortcut here that, that makes it a little confusing. Will start to matter a lot. Whatever. I made it! Yes! Okay, so um, I think the biggest problem, if I had to grade this as a, if it was a student turning this in, I would say, you're confusing vectors and scalars, and that's a bad thing. Um, the, the, the other thing was it, not necessarily wrong as much as uh, it really wasn't an interesting problem. But uh, so then, then someone's going to say, well, you sh if you think it's not good, you should do someone better. So I think I'll do that. I think I'll solve this exact same problem and make a video of it and just, just for comparison.